Yo, before the video begins, make sure to take notes on this if you're trying to learn something because this is a long replay analysis and because of that, I do the outro really quickly and I don't recap your big main takeaways. So, you know, you're not going to get a summary at the end of your mistakes. So make sure you're taking notes if you don't want to have to go back and rewatch the video again. If you don't mind rewatching the video, rewatching those those times where I point something out then you don't have to take notes, but take notes otherwise. All right, let's get into it. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel for a new replay analysis. Today we're analyzing Andre, who is ranked champ three in 2v2 with his duo Q teammate. He's playing some 2v2 today and it should be a fun analysis to do. But before we get into it guys, do me a favor, real quick, drop a like on the video because I already know you're gonna like the video and you're gonna learn something. So you might as well leave that like now. And I get a lot of new viewers to the channel with each of these replay analysis so if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe for educational rock league content that's what this channel is really focused on making content that makes you a better rock league player so that i don't have to have a scrub on my team every time i play feel free to leave a comment down below also on what type of educational content you want to see and what you need to improve as a player i will be more than happy to take suggestions from you guys and make content that you guys need and that you guys think would help you in the long run also if you want to get a replay analysis like the one we're about to do and like the other ones on my channel all you have to do is join my discord the link is in the description down below and post your replay analysis file or your youtube video of your replay in the replay analysis chat channel it's completely free although if you want to skip the line because i do these first come first serve and you know they pile up and they take a while to get to for example andre here has been waiting for about two and a half months for this replay to get done if you're in more of a hurry than that to get your analysis done you can Subscribe to my Twitch or my Patreon for about $5 and get access to a replay analysis for subs channel. And I do any analysis posted into that channel before I do the free ones because that just makes sense. You're paying to support me, so I'll support you by doing your analysis first. So the links to my Twitch and my Patreon are both in the description as well. If you want to subscribe to those, get access to that channel and get your analysis done faster. You can do that. But if you don't want to do that, still click the, the Twitch link. Follow me on Twitch. You can get these kind of tips live. You can ask me questions. You can watch my gameplay and learn from it or just come and hang out and chill. It's always a good time to have you guys coming from the YouTube channel and hanging out with me in the Twitch it feels really good. And I love to hear that you guys are coming from the YouTube channel because it feels really good. It makes me feel like all this work I'm putting into the YouTube channel is well worth it. Without further ado, let's get into the analysis for Andre and his friend who he has partied up with. I should probably go first person. Right, starting off with a fake kickoff from the other team. I like that you're not pushing up for that too far. There was no way you're gonna beat that guy to the ball, so. Just waiting to see what he does is a good option there. Good open net finish. All right, ideally, I'm going to point this out. When going for the corner boost on kickoff, really bad habit um, is to turn upfield off of the kickoff afterwards. You really want to turn defensively when going for corner boost off of kickoff. Really small detail, but instead of turning up this way, after you grab the boost, you want to turn actually back towards your net. Just in case this is a dead ball kickoff and this man's cheating. If he's cheating, he gets a free shot on your net. And if you turned up field this way, nine times out of 10, you usually can't get back in time in order to save that shot. So while you may want to get up field, be on offense faster, that little bit of extra speed that you might have going up field isn't worth the possibility of conceding kickoff goals. So really try to get into the habit of turning defensively off of the corner boost grab waiting to see if you need to defend a dead ball kickoff and then you can push up field small detail weren't punished for it in this scenario you can even you can even what you really can do is pay attention to if the other player on the team on the opponent's team is even cheating up if you notice that they're not cheating up and that they're also going for corner boost then it makes it a bit more acceptable to turn up field but he was cheating up in this in this scenario. So if that was a dead ball kickoff and he had a free shot on net right now, you probably wouldn't be able to save it because you turned offensively upfield. Up Just keep that in mind. A little slow to that challenge, but 
right idea for sure. Okay, here between you and your teammate, I would like to see this is analysis for you, but you did, you know, you are dual queued and you did ask me to, you know, point out your your team uh, mistakes or whatever. And this is just kind of a good general tip for people in general because it happens a lot in my own games. Um, this should be your ball if you had to choose between one of you to make this save. Reason being, this man is rotating out this way. This guy's momentum is carrying him this way. So both of these players are over on this side of the field. So he's clearing the ball into the same direction that the opponents are. So if you take this clear, you'd actually be clearing it into free space. Really overlooked detail. Also sometimes hard to make that call in the moment, but as you get higher and higher ranked, you should be able to make that call faster and faster and realize who, who can clear the ball away from the opponents and who is going to be clearing the ball into the same position as the opponent. So this should be your clear, but your teammate might not realize you're back, might not know if you have this save. So he goes up. It's understandable, but that is something to keep in mind. Again, the players, the momentum of the players is bringing them this way. This guy's rotating out this way. So clearing the ball in this area is actually the less than ideal clear. You'd rather clear it into this open space over here. See this one more time. You're going for the boost steal there. It looks like I would rather see you go for the demo here. Right. If you commit hard for that demo, which you might actually be trying to get, you might assume he might turn right into this boost, but he's able to grab the boost without turning into it. Uh, I would have liked to see you try to commit for that demo a little bit more. I don't know if you're going for the boost steal or the demo. You might have been trying to get the demo assuming he was turning into the boost but you know close small detail small detail if you were trying to get the demo then good play if not i would like to see you go for the demo there good job waiting for the interference from your teammate See if there's anything you could have done a little better here or not. I mean, not the strongest possession of the ball. Kind of lost control of it. I don't want to see you... Go up for this as early as you did, really. Because you are you got to make sure when you go up for this, you're going to have a nice, solid read. And you're going to be confident in hitting this. So take the extra second to let this come out and read it you notice with how early you went up you didn't realize how far over your head this ball was going to be when you went up and now your aerial looks kind of shaky meanwhile your teammate just landed in their net and he's going to take a little bit extra of extra time to get back so you're last man right now so you can't afford to make any mistakes here so take an extra second to read this bounce a little better have a better aerial because that was a really weak aerial. You had you used a lot of extra boost that you didn't need to use because you had to lean back and aerial upwards to get that touch. Uh, yeah, not a great, not a great aerial, and you got to make sure you're not making a mistake as last man. Good track. If I go back to this offensive play here. The one thing I will say is you're pushing up a little fast, right? You want to kind of stay at your teammates same lateral position right you want to stay straight across from your teammate if not a little back further than your teammate that way you can get back and play defense if say 
Kito makes a good challenge here. Maybe he just drives backwards, does a half flip challenge into the ball, and you need to get back and be on defense. You're pushing up too fast. If the, the further and further you get ahead of the play, the longer it's going to take for you to possibly get back and play defense if you need to. And then not only that, but by being further back for this pass, you're actually making it harder on the defender here because his momentum as he's shadow defending is carrying him this way, right? So if the pass comes and he leads you, you're calling for the ball straight up ahead this way. It's not very hard for him to turn at any point in his shadow defense and challenge the ball. But if this pass, if you're further back, like here, this is the center of your car instead of up here, and he passes this more straight across. Look at how much further he is from this pass. It's going to be a lot harder for him to turn and challenge you. And, you know, if that makes sense, that's all I'm really trying to get across. But if you're actually back, he can even, your teammate can even get slightly ahead of the ball, right? He drops the ball here, drives up in front of it and passes it slightly back. If you're back even further, right? Like I said, you want to be straight across if not back a little further from your teammate when positioning for the pass and again it's just putting extra distance between the defender and where the pass is going it's going to make it harder for him to intercept the pass so actually moving ahead of your teammate for the pass here is less than ideal opens up makes it easier on the defender to intercept the pass because the, the pass is just closer to him and it's following the direct same momentum, same path that he's already shadow defending. And that's actually exactly what happens, right? One more time, if I point this out, bam, right in this moment, you can see if this pass was more here, look where he's at. He doesn't have a good angle to challenge. You can at this position, if you're coming from right here, you can shoot up here, you can shoot you know, top right corner, top left corner, back behind him at the near post, which is a really deadly shot. Always shooting behind your opponent is always super deadly because they're gonna, they have a choice, right? They either carry the momentum as fast as possible to try to get to the opposite side of the net, which is what most people will do because that's the only way they can reach that far side of the net, right? But if so, if you shoot behind them, they're not gonna be able to slow down in time in order to save any shot behind them. So that's a really deadly option is always shooting behind your opponents. But yeah, again, you can see if this pass came out here and you were coming for it from here, it's so much further from the defender and you're giving yourself more options, more ability to shoot it past him. So that's, I mean, that's kind of a giveaway. You don't have much boost, so there's not a lot you can do here. But even if there's not a lot you can do, you still don't want to just throw away the ball, right? You could have taken a better shot here. You sort of jump up above the ball for your shot. Right? You're jumping up above the ball for your shot. So it's going down into the ground when you flip into it right it's or it's not gaining any height if you take this shot from the bottom of the ball you'll actually get some height on it and make it an actually somewhat difficult save for this player you won't just be rolling the ball into him pretty much so try to take a better shot try to get under the ball when you shoot it to get some height on it or even even though you're zero boost you can still just crawl behind the ball while it rolls this direction and if he doesn't challenge if he makes the incorrect play of not challenging you while you don't have possession of the ball you can actually probably pick up a pad while you're following the ball or maybe even get the ball on your hood for a flick with zero boost right there's a chance if he doesn't challenge what might happen a lot of the time is they, they just pick the wrong time to challenge his time to challenge would be bam while you don't have possession of the ball and it's rolling and you're falling behind it but at worst for you in that scenario, you take a 50-50. That's worst case scenario, which isn't bad. It's actually probably good for you if you get to take a 50-50 with their last man. 
because you're possibly taking him out of the play, the other guy's low boost behind the play. In taking a 50-50 here could actually just open up a free net for your teammate. But if he doesn't challenge, then you get the time and the space to try to set up a flick. And setting up a flick and, you know, putting yourself in a 1v1 opportunity on this last man again is better than just hitting the ball into him. So either try to take a better shot, take your time, to, just that little extra half a second to maybe let the ball bounce and then hit it so you can be underneath the ball when you take this shot. Or just let it roll, follow behind it for a 50-50 at worst or a flick at best. But always try, in general, always try to avoid making a useless touch. If you know the touch isn't going to be good, no point making it. Not a bad attempt. This is a shootable ball. Just a bad... Uh, a bad attempt, but not a bad idea, I should say. Not a bad idea to try to shoot this. Bad attempt, though. Got too far in front of the ball, didn't get behind it enough. Good chip on the ball into the boost grab. I like that. Good job. Looking for the pass. If you're going to pass this, though, that first touch has to be the pass. Bam, that has to be the pass. You don't have time to take a, shot, a touch here. First, oftentimes, if you're going to pass, the first touch needs to be the pass. Not always, but especially in this scenario, because you've got you've got defenders so close to you. Not a terrible fake challenge. I personally... I would probably take a 50-50 here. I think that would be the better play rather than fake challenging. Because you see your teammate is rotating out. He didn't get stuck in their net here. Which if he got stuck in their net, you would want to fake challenge because you don't want to take a 50-50 have it possibly go badly and then neither of you are able to get back in time. But here you can see your teammate managed to rotate out quickly, didn't hit the post. So I would like to see you probably take a 50-50 here, maybe try to take a 50-50 towards the left, towards the corner to try and either take possession of the ball if he's a low boost or to have another 50-50 on the ball. Just try to fight for this possession a little bit more because by fake challenging, fake challenging again would have been the good play if you needed to buy time for your teammate to get back. But your teammate's already back. He did a good job uh, not getting stuck in the opponent's net for very long. And so you want to kind of try to fight for this possession on offense. But by fake challenging, you just let him freely bring the play to your side of the field. Looks like, oh my god. You, probably sh you definitely should have gotten scored on there. Weak shot. Good save, but really weak shot. Should have been a goal. All right, here. Coming into the play unnecessarily. Your teammate's in the corner. Still has possession of this ball. You just saw your teammate grab a full boost in the corner. That boost is up. This is a replay bug. He did grab this boost. So he has full boost. Okay. He didn't get that 100 boost in the corner. That was a replay bug. My my fault. He didn't get that, that 100 boost. So I take that slightly back. Not a bad play for you to come in on that. But you got to try to keep it closer at the very least. All right? If you're going to come in, again, for the same reason, you're both in the corner now if you're going to come in for this. So you don't want to do anything that's going to give your opponents an opportunity to take possession right away. Right, stay behind this ball for a 50-50 if you see somebody coming. If you don't see somebody coming, then you can start dribbling it up the sidewall and making a play, trying to make an outplay on the first guy who challenges you. 
But by just pinching this, we see this guy's over here ready for it. And now he gets to push it immediately back into offense while your teammate's just now collecting boost. And this could be awkward for your teammate. Alright, alright. Let's go back, see if we can do anything better on this touch. You do hear your opponents behind you, so you gotta be careful. You don't wanna get that mode. This touch actually isn't terrible. Unlucky that he gets a little bit of a bump on you. You could have been faster to follow that up. Probably beat that last guy, honestly. So not a bad play. Here, again, just more of a uh, teamwork or, you know, your teammate kind of tip here. I would like to see after he grabs this mid boost to he should lurk around this area. Let him stay or he should stay in this area and lurk. For two reasons to let this well, mainly for one reason. But just to take away, he's taking away the ground option, right? If this guy's got the ball up here and he wants to let it float down to the ground in order to make a ground play off the wall, or he jumps up for the aerial and then again wants to make a ground play and he just kind of shadows behind the ball until it comes down to the ground. Your teammate lurking in this area takes away that option. <clears throat> and then all you have to cover is the aerial option. As soon as that aerial option is executed and made, then your teammate can rotate behind you. You challenge first, and then he backs you up, right? So if he lurks in this area down here, he's taking away this man's option of bringing this ball down to the ground. And he's also telling this guy, he, he's signaling to him that he can't bring it down to the ground. So his only option is to hit it forward where you can, you know, collect and get the next possession but by him instantly rotating back putting himself in the same position as you this guy has the option to bring it down to the ground or to make the aerial play so you guys are only covering one option in this play instead of two and then he also he makes a bad touch and the ball comes right about to where your teammate would have been which as it's coming down to this position it probably is still your challenge because it's a pretty floaty ball and like right here you can definitely challenge this for sure even if your teammate was lurking in this right underneath the ball here once this happens he can probably this is kind of situational i don't know for sure whether you'd want to leave this for your teammate who was lurking in that area or if you would want to come challenge it wouldn't really matter either way but whatever happens you want to make sure you're not double committing so if you're going to challenge you want your teammate to rotate out if your teammate is staying there to catch this ball or 50 at this ball as it comes down to the ground then you want to wait for that and you don't want to throw yourself in. So it doesn't matter who would go in this situation, but just make sure you don't double commit. Rushed touch here. Yeah, you've got a lot of free time on this ball. So try to take a better touch, putting this on target or putting this on backboard. You know, your champ three. You should be able to control your touches a little bit better. I understand miss touches happen, but try to keep it under control. All you do is hit this way over here. It's completely safe for this guy. It's actually giving him a lot of free space and a lot of time to collect boosts and set up a play. You hit this ball to the backboard or on target, something that actually threatens this defender. There's a chance you're going to make him mess up. There's a chance he'll just whiff and it'll be a goal. You know, there's a chance he'll panic and again, mess up and you guys can just collect to make a free play or it's just score an open net but yeah just kind of you kind of took the the worst possible touch you could have had unfortunately and this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of trolly 
right? You should be letting your teammate come in on this, and he probably doesn't challenge because of how close you're getting to the play here. You can really just start driving forward and rotate behind your teammate here. But you kind of troll a little bit. Half flipping into that and then not going. Which I wish you could challenge this side on, but... If you're gonna do this, if you're gonna troll, if you're gonna position like you're gonna challenge next, then you need to challenge next. But you kind of fake your teammate by going and then not going and then being in this position in the first place. Uh, you need to, you know, this is kind of a troll. <laughs> you, you, weird play, could have worked out, you could have challenged, but then you don't and your teammate saw that you were up field, so he doesn't challenge. And so because of you, Nobody challenges, and now this guy gets free possession. Open net. Oh. oh. <laughs> bummer, bummer, dude. Wow, that's unfortunate, that's unfortunate. You played that pretty well. This ball, ooh, you did a front flip instead of a diagonal flip. That's the only reason you didn't hit that ball. That's such a close margin, that's unlucky. Unlucky, but also a mistake. Just, it's lucky that he was, that he capitalized on that mistake. It's lucky, he was probably honestly just taking a 50-50 there and you ended up missing the ball and the 50-50, you know, the, the outcome was just the ball on target. Probably wasn't even trying to necessarily score that. Alright. I wasn't going to point this out, but... It ended up putting you guys in a bad position, so I am going to point it out. This is a pretty aggressive uh, rotation by you, a pretty aggressive challenge, right? I've, made, I've pointed out in another video before that you rarely ever want to drive from one side of the field all the way to the other side of the field in order to challenge a ball, right? Because if you're all the way over here, proper space, proper spacing should signal that your teammate's somewhere in the midfield. And so you're dry, he's right, your teammate's all the way over in this midfield area facing forward probably facing you know he has the ability to drive any direction that he needs to in order to challenge the next ball so by you coming all this way you are pretty much cutting off your teammate here who can just come and head on challenge this ball which is a better challenge in this position you should be rotating behind your teammate letting him challenge and then you follow him up what you really want to do in this situation, if you're all the way over here, well, in this play, yeah, just immediately rotate around, let your teammate have the next challenge. But say this ball is a little bit uh, more in the middle of the net, it's not clearly coming all the way across the net. You can kind of shepherd, right? I like this term, kind of shepherd the ball, shepherd the, the defender in the direction you want him to go, lead him, force him into the corner, feed him, shepherd him to your teammate who can challenge over here so you'd want to drive up to this midfield tell him you're coming to challenge he's going to try to run away bring the ball to to safety or to open space and then you turn off of it let your teammate challenge and you rotate behind him so i like the term shepherding you're kind of just shepherding his play into your teammate but this is not your ball to challenge because again you have to drive all the way from one side of the field all the way to the other to challenge the ball but you should have a teammate somewhere in that in that time frame who could come challenge the ball at a better angle and i did a whole video really detailed explanation on this in another video i will i will link that in the description the other video that i'm talking about so check that out if you want a more detailed explanation but yeah you end up Pretty much taking your teammates challenge and <clears throat> while the play was slow enough that your teammate probably could have repositioned 
faster. Let's take a look at that from his point of view. Now nah, press the wrong button. Right, kickoff happens. Teammate goes all the way back to the corner, actually. That's bad. Uh, bad positioning by your teammate. He should, because you guys are on the offensive, on the offensive, and you have your teammate just grabbed, or you just grabbed 100 boosts. If he just grabs a couple of pads, he can get himself up to 30, 40, 50. You know, depending on how long it takes for this challenge to come through, he could possibly be almost full boost by the time he has to challenge. So instead of going all the way back here, he should be picking up some pads, staying in the play, which then he would be... All right, let's, let's execute this from a fly perspective after this happens, right? <clears throat> what you want to ideally do from your teammate's point of view here, because he knows you're going to get 100 boosts, this ball is flying into the offensive end. And you guys want to try to take advantage of being on offense here. You should turn, grab a couple pads, probably grab this pad. Maybe grab this pad, this pad, and then he'll be in this position to challenge the ball. And it may not seem like a huge difference, right? He's like, oh, I'm already right here. I'm already right here. Why not go out and grab that boost? But that's actually a lot bigger of a of a difference than you might think right grab this pad and follow probably this path if anything and then if you have the time and the space before you need a challenge you can even grab the 100 boost but you probably don't need to and it might actually be gone by the time this guy grabs it which him grabbing that mid boost is actually a misplay as well but that's a topic for another video but yeah because there's no threat of a hard clear here based on where the ball is landing, right? The best he can do is maybe clear it to this sidewall, which again, you'd be in position for if you follow this path of pads over there. There's no threat of it coming bang all the way to your side, possibly in your net, just based on, again, the trajectory of the ball, the positioning of the opponent. There's no way this is going to be an immediately dangerous clear that you need to be back for. He should have grabbed pads to stay up on offense, been around this midfield area by the time you shepherd the play this direction. And then he takes over the challenge from, again, coming from this side of the field. It's kind of a misplay on both your parts. I wonder if you guys were in comms and he communicated that he was going back for boost. If that's the case, <clears throat> yes, you would want a challenge here. Or your teammate who's back grabbing boost but he shouldn't have been back all the way to the corner grabbing boost in this play Yeah, the teamwork isn't completely there, right? You guys are consistently, what I've noticed, covering the same option. Because this clear, I like your positioning. You're here in case he messes up. In case he gives you a free open net to shoot on, right? He misses his touch or he accidentally passes it right in front of the net. Or he, you know, like I said, just drops the ball badly in front of the net. You could try to 50 it in or just shoot the open net. So you're covering the close option. Your teammate needs to be covering the far option where he actually manages to hit this clear. But he's covering the same, pretty much the same thing as you. So you guys need to do a better job of not covering the same option. Which I think in most of these plays, uh, it's been more on your teammate than you. He's been, you know, back in that earlier play where we, where we showed he could have stayed shadowing under the ball in case the, the opponent wanted to try to take it to the ground. Uh, instead, he just rotated straight to the corner, put himself in the same position, covering the same option as you. Here, he's covering, again, the same option. He's not covering a far option. He's only covering a close option, a close, you know, in front of the net option, which we were already covering. So this clear, you know, he's not ready to, to take possession of this, to take a touch back into offense. He's, he was in the same position as you, essentially. And again, you're not playing perfectly either, but overall as a team, you guys need to do better of not covering the same option. Oh, and we're going to OT, huh? Okay. Yeah, I mean, 
not much to say on the double commit there. You don't want to get scored on in zero seconds, and he manages to get a good challenge. Ooh, that was almost a nice shot. Nice. Good defense. A good beat by your opponent. Oof. Is there any way you could have been upfield here to support your teammate? Yeah, that that bis that boost miss kind of kills it. Unfortunate. I don't mind you got. I don't mind you trying to grab that boost in that play instead of picking up pads there. It's kind of situational. That one wasn't as bad. You could have picked up that big boost and then immediately started boosting back up field while pathing over pads. So you're essentially not really wasting any boost, right? A lot of the time people will talk crap about, oh, you go all the way back to grab boost and then use 50% of it to get back up field when you could have done the same thing as picking up pads, which is completely true. But in this situation, In this situation, there's not going to be a scoring opportunity soon enough that it's really uh, completely a misplay to grab this back corner boost. Grab this back corner boost and then immediately path up field over pads while boosting and flipping in order to get up as soon as possible while wasting as little boost as possible. And then by the time you got back into position, then there would be a scoreable, possibly a scoreable opportunity. Just kind of an experience thing and a recognition of kind of timing and the speed of the play. But in that play, you had the time to go for the back corner boost. You didn't need to be upfield. But unfortunately, you missed the boost. Uh oh. Okay. Kind of a wasted possession by your teammate there. Took a weak shot on net with a defender. You were a passing option there. Could have done better with that. I mean, this is your analysis. I'm not watching this from your teammate's point of view. I'm sure I could find a lot of mistakes from his point of view, just like I do your point of view. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll point out a couple as we go if they're obvious. Wow. Almost, 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 almost lost it there. Got to be careful about clearing it straight into the opponent, right? This is a hard position to be in. You're pushing yourself at champ three, which is good. I like that you're pushing yourself to try to do harder things. But you got to have the skill of improv when you do mess up and damage control, right? 
So worst case scenario here, you do what you did. Worst case scenario, you pinch the ball or you roll the ball straight to your opponent. So you need to find some other way to make sure that this doesn't happen, right? After you mess up, right? Your initial goal here might be, should probably be to jump up off this wall and either hard clear it down the field or to jump up off this wall and clear it to your corner, get around it, clear it to your corner. After you mess up though, your next goal should probably be to try to still take a touch to the right side of the field rather than pinch this straight up field. That's not a huge mistake, kind of just panic in the moment. Can't really teach somebody how to not panic or teach somebody how to improvise or teach somebody how to damage control you know what i mean that's just kind of something you'll you'll learn as you as you play more and more as you mess up this is why you know messing up is such an important part of improving because it teaches you how to improvise it teaches you how to you know run damage control it teaches you what you can do when you mess something up in order to avoid disaster so that'll just come with experience and with playing more and messing up more Again, sort of a weak touch, not really anything beneficial going to happen here. You're trying to like, I don't know. I don't know what the goal with this touch is. It doesn't really accomplish anything. What you could have done here, I probably would have liked to see you try to bring this ball to the ground. Shadow this ball, follow this ball on the wall as it lowers down to the ground. And by doing that, at any point in time, if you're shadowing this ball as it comes down to the ground, at any time, if this guy turns a challenge, then you can jump off the wall and take the touch and possibly shoot at the same time. And he'll be caught out of position, trying to challenge you, thinking you're not going to hit it or something, or trying to shut down your play. But as soon as you see him turn and try to stop you from, from bringing the ball down to the ground, then you jump off the wall, hit it past him. He might still get the save, but it's a lot more threatening than just doing what you did here. Or at the you know what you could possibly do if he never turns and challenges he just continues to shadow defend and this ball comes all the way down to the ground you shadow this ball all the way down to the ground and you can power shot it bang straight to the net once it hits the ground here just bang right off the bounce power shot into the net you can catch the ball on your hood, set up for a flick. You can hit it to the backboard for your teammate, rotate out, or hit it to the backboard for your teammate. Go for the demo quickly and then rotate out. Don't overcommit for the demo because, again, if your teammate misses the backboard touch, then it's going to be an open net the other way. A lot of options you have here if you don't immediately jump off the wall here and just make a, a dud sort of touch. A lot of options. a pretty bad turn up field for the boost pretty bad turn up field for the boost because you're not able to challenge the ball and your opponent is bringing the ball down the same path as that boost so he's gonna plan on taking that as you see not really a lot to say about it other than that it's just it just doesn't really make sense to turn for that boost there because the play is following right behind you you have no momentum you have no boost to try to and it's just is i don't think i need to explain why that's a bad boost grab it just is well, that's a bad turn for the boost, it just is. Again, another worthless touch, another time where you're coming off the wall when you don't need to, going for the ball. This ball is gonna come to the wall. So instead of jumping off for this, just stay on the wall and let the ball come to you. Stay on the wall here, let the ball come up to the corner and catch it on your hood, push it forward on your on the front of your car, right? Let this ball continue its trajectory right around here. You can either bang it once it reaches here and get a lot more power, right? By hitting it as soon as it bounces, you get a lot more power. Or you can, if it's manageable in this position, catch the ball on your hood on the wall. That is possible. 
and then same thing as earlier you wait for the opponent to come challenge you and then you play it past them boost at this moment Ooh, was that up let's go back further see if that boost is up okay it's not up really 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 bad positioning by you here you're super far away from the play and then not only that you're turning up field when the ball is about to come back your way if you're gonna be this far out of position grabbing this boost you need to turn defensively right here it's just a sort of a reading the play you got to read the play quicker bam you turn on ball cam you see this flick but bam you see that opponent right there it's you just got to read the play faster realize this guy has the ability to hit this probably score this if he's if he's on his game like this is a tough shot to score because it's an open net and open nets are tough but this you know your teammate has the potential to possibly get a bump here that's like best case scenario but you don't want to risk your the game on one possible best case scenario play this definitely could have been game. Ooh, your teammate gets the bump. If he, I think if your teammate doesn't get that bump, it's still game, actually. Even, I think, I don't think you would have got back by the time that guy could have shot if your teammate didn't get the bump there. But really, really bad spacing by you there. The, the play was all the way in one corner. You were all the way at the other side of the field, and then you turned the wrong way as well. Right. It's a bit passive from you here. A bit too passive from you here. I feel like what's running through your mind here is you want to save this boost for your teammate. And then knowing that your teammate's going to come for this boost, you don't want to be in the same position as him. Right? If you turn up field here and challenge, your teammate's pretty much going to be arriving to that mid boost at the same time as you. And for a, a moment there, you will be in the same position. So you, you're trying to avoid that is what I think is running through your mind here. But you're giving him way too much space. Right, you're calling essentially for your teammate to come grab this boost. You're telling him to come grab this boost with just your car language. You're leaving this boost for him. And so he's going to come do that. He's not going to... His first instinct is not to interfere with the play here because you're, you're calling for him to come take this boost. This is just... I think it would have been better to play that selfishly to in order to keep pressure on the ball here. I don't think you need to save your teammate this boost. I think you probably want to take this boost just because it's in the position you need to be in, right? By trying to save this boost for your teammate, you're taking yourself out of the position that you need to be in. Because if you path over this boost, if I play this just a second longer here, you turning out this extra width in order to avoid grabbing this boost messes up the timing that you have a window of opportunity to put yourself in position to challenge this next ball or to fake challenge this next ball because if you grab this boost and turn here you can challenge this ball before he's able to get possession of it if he's slow if you notice he's slow to the ball you can beat him to this ball or if you notice he isn't slow to this ball and that he is beating you again you're in this position 
and then you just shadow defend from here. But by swinging wide like this, you're not able to get into this position in time in order to possibly beat him to the in order to make the decision to beat him or to shadow defend, right? You're not able to get into this position at the right moment. This is really hard to kind of explain why this is a misplay. I hope it makes sense, but I, I like to kind of give advice tips in sort of general advice in a general advice sort of way. That way it makes it easier to comprehend and easier to utilize. So in this play, the general advice I would give is don't be afraid to take a boost. Don't be afraid to not save the boost for your teammate if doing so is going to take you out of position. I think I think this to myself a lot in my own games. This is actually advice that is 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 useful and usable. I think this to myself a lot like is this boost worth worth saving or is trying to save this boost going to take me out of the position that I need to be in? If the boost is in your path that you have to take in order to make your play, so be it. You can't save your teammate the boost because you need to be there. That's okay. You don't always have to save your teammate the boost if it's going to take you out of the position that you need to be in. And that's exactly what happened in this play. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes you have to take the boost because you just need to go exactly where that boost is at. This has to be game. Nice, good finish, good finish. All right, there's your replay, man. It's been a long one, so I'm gonna make this outro pretty quick. I'm not gonna go over your big tips because I don't remember it. It's been a very long recording and I can't remember most of your tips. So go back to the, the big moments where I gave you those explanations, watch it again, take notes. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned something, don't forget, leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, follow me on Twitch, link is in the description, join the Discord, that's in the description. Follow me on TikTok, my TikToks have been blowing up lately, actually, as a matter of fact. Love to see you guys in all of those places, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.